my real thing is I like action. There's some prime things that we can put into place in our lives to live a godly life. You can put skills and things into your lives even if you've messed up. So, Jenna? Oh. <laughs> it's me. I thought I would just interrupt it. <laughs> You're okay. starting. Well, okay. You can go. Welcome. Oh, no, no, no. You start. No, no. <laughs> Welcome to Just Jenna. There we go. You did good. Uh, am, I, am I okay? <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> well, uh, let's say Just Jenna. <laughs> it's where we talk about how the gospel impacts relationships. I'm just, I'm totally interrupting her today. I love okay. it. I love it. I caught her off guard. You did. That is my goal during this episode is to catch you off guard. Well, I think you're very handsome. So how about I take you off guard? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Whoa. All right. She Enough. took me off guard the other day when, like, in front of everybody, you told me I preached well. That embarrassed me. You did it? A little bit. Oh, wow. Well, but, you did. I got saved six times on Sunday. Well, Easter. Saturday. It was Easter. Easter weekend. Easter weekend. Yeah, we had a great time, which uh, <sighs> people are watching, listening, watching this. Probably two weeks after Easter Yeah, two at this weeks, point. but... So. So much has happened since So then. much has happened. Well, <laughs> this is just Jana, and um, I'm just going to take over here. Okay, take over. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but this is like, we only have um, one two, one or two more episodes in this season, this, um, what do you call it, spring 2022 season. Yep. We're going to bring the clothes and then come back in the fall. Yes. We'll come back with fresh new content. Fresh. <laughs> fresh. For the world. Oh. <laughs> I like, look at her, fresh, new, look at me go. brand new content for the for the entire world. It'll change your life. We do want to encourage you to share this, subscribe. You're watching on YouTube, subscribe. I got to confess something. I just, for the first time, figured out how to get on YouTube the other day. Well, good for you. <laughs> do, you, you know, do you know how to get on YouTube? I do know how to get on YouTube. Yes, yeah, I do. It's so embarrassing to confess that. <laughs> so today's show is about what we think every person needs or you're going to be in real trouble yeah. in the day where our culture is, um, I don't even know, evil, evil. spinning mm-hmm. out of control. Yep. What do we all need, Jenna? Yeah, I think we need godly wisdom. I think there's a difference between earthly wisdom and godly wisdom. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking of First Kings chapter 3 when Solomon asked God, Uh, for wisdom. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask to be famous. He said, I need wisdom so that I know how to lead these great people of yours. And if there was ever a time we needed the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and not use our own earthly wisdom, we need wisdom that comes from God. And that comes from asking and submitting to Him and not trying to do it on our own. So we're going to give five ways to become a wise person. Yes. And by the way, I think you're a very wise person. Oh, God, look at you. What is this? I'm handsome and wise. You are. (laughs) I'm handsome. No, I was actually thinking about this. I'll give you a prime example. As I was watching and seeing firsthand experience through this whole last two years of pandemic, I feel like you you have led, you know, our church well. You have led our family well. When everything was chaos and everyone was, you know, running around doing things, you just, you put your head down and you remained steady and you made one good decision after another. And I think that's why we're receiving the blessings today. And now so, you're, you're flirting with me a little I bit. Am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you brought up the King Solomon. Um, by the way, thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't take compliments well. You don't. Well, you don't either. <laughs> Thank you for that. So we'll compliment each other on, on our show <laughs> Well, here. somebody's got to compliment you. Yeah, it's true. But you're referring to Solomon. What's fascinating to me about that passage, and we'll get to it in the notes in a moment, but um, it was God that says, Solomon, you can have anything you want. Anything in the world. Money, riches. Fame, mm-hmm. followers on social media. Yep. There was no social media back in those days. True. But all that. But it would have been that. Yeah. yeah you can have anything. And he said, you can have life, prosperity, blah, blah. And he said, no, all I want is wisdom. Yeah. He says, for who can lead these great people of yours? And right. I think, um, let's think about all the people that need wisdom. If you're a, if you're a, a parent, mm-hmm. we have grandkids. Boy, raising up our, our yep. th- I was going to say two, but it's three little grandkids. Yes. Um, if you're a student, if you're a teenager, yep. like you're a 16-year-old teenager, you need wisdom on how to. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you're a 16-year-old in high school, we just need to circle around you the in a public school system, the things that our teenagers are dealing with today is 
unbearable. Yeah. And we need wisdom. Yeah, the living, following Jesus while you go mm. to public high school, wow. Yeah, it's different. It's it's hardcore, the things that are coming at them today. So if you have a teenager or you know of a teenager, give them a big hug and come around them and Yeah, and pray for them. just wisdom beyond their years. Um, I also think if you're single out there, mm-hmm. you're in this dating world, with wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> Yes. Wisdom with social media. Yeah. Wisdom with your job. I think wisdom. So I, I think the problem is, Jenna, is that we are a world full of uh, what I want to call Google information mm-hmm. versus godly insight. Right. So it's like we have so much information. Right. It's, yeah. It's like we're, we're so information, yet we have very little wisdom. Right. And that would be the purpose of this show is it really how to mm-hmm. go from just having the facts to really having the wisdom to navigate life and right. how the gospel impacts that. I like this. It's to have knowledge is to have understanding or information about hmm. something. But to have wisdom is the ability to know how to apply it, the knowledge, to everyday life. Well, I know good. that's a mouthful. but, no, but like, you know, So knowledge means understanding, mm-hmm. information, or facts. Right. And then wisdom is... The ability to apply it. Apply it, yeah. So we need that wisdom because you can be smart. You can go to school, you can have degrees, you can have it all figured out. But if you don't know how to apply it to situations, it's all just head knowledge. And and what does the Bible say? It it, it puffs your brain up. Yeah, knowledge puffs up. It causes pride. Uh, Yeah, what does it say there? Knowledge Knowledge puffs puffs up, but love builds up. Yeah. And we have a lot of people that are are smart, but not loving. Right. Again, we have so much information in our world. I think sometimes... um, we actually confuse ourselves. And again, information right. is good. I love information. Yeah. I've got Le- my- Learning and studying is good for your brain. Yeah, it's good. It helps you grow. But to not have that wisdom to apply. Here's another mm-hmm. definition. It's the ability to discern what is um, true, right, lasting, of insight. So it's, mm-hmm. this, it's, it's not the ability to discern facts, but what is true. Right. What is right, what is lasting, was inside. I think that's what when we say wisdom, we're not talking about getting more information, even though we need more information. Mm-hmm. But what is actually true, or wh- what I say often is, um, what's the story? Right. Like I, I have a phrase that says, trust the story. I think it's trying to lean into the narrative and the story more than just the facts you find on Google. Yeah, because I, I mean, again, I think the more information you have, if it doesn't um, come out of you, and if, if it's not applied to the circumstances, it goes nowhere but yep. your head and makes you think that you're better than you are. <laughs> yeah. And you know, one of the misconceptions of wisdom, Jen, I think there's two. A, if you have more information, you're wise. That's mm-hmm. just not true. Nope. I also think people think age gives you wisdom, and I don't mm-hmm. think it's true. I would agree with that. I think it has the potential of giving you wisdom. Yep. But uh, if you're 16, 21, 31, 81, 81 you <laughs> could be really foolish yep. or you could be wise. Yep. So I think A should, I think right. experience should give us more wisdom. Yep. But if you don't do have these five things we're going to talk about, yeah, right. A just makes you grumpy. You just, <laughs> well, let's <hope. laughs> Grouchy. Grouchy? Uh, yeah. It, it I think you can, be, I mean, you can be old but not wise. Yes. You said it better than me. You can be old <laughs> and not wise. And the goal is to age with wisdom so that you can pass that on to the next generation and... Um, not just carry it in your own head. Yeah, good. So let's head into this, okay? So right. we're gonna we're gonna do James chapter three today. Yeah, three. James has great things to say about wisdom. Right. Read James on. three thirteen it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by their good life. Wow. By deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. Wow. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly unspiritual (laughs) demonic (laughs) for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that first comes from heaven is first of all pure peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And we can be done. No, no we can almost be done. I like mean, it's that just, again, covers it all. One of the things I love about the Bible is so practical. And if you're not a Christian or you're not a follower of Christ, man, read the Bible. It's, it's just yeah. practical. It's just so solid here. 
that wisdom is shown by your good life, mm-hmm. by the good life, by deeds done in humility. Yeah. So uh, imply that if you have pride, you're not going to be a person of wisdom at all. Right. You can't. You can't. It, I don't know that it coexists. Yeah. I don't know that you can you can do that and have pride. If you, I don't think it can coexist so, and be wise. Yeah. And again, we're talking about having arrogance, really pride, right. arrogance, not 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 confidence. I right. guess there, there's there, there's a there's a whole show. Right. The difference between pride and confidence right. is a fascinating thing. Right. But James would say that humility is birth. With humility is birth wisdom. Yeah. Then he he says he says if you don't have wisdom, you actually have um um. Earthly wisdom, which could be earthly and spiritual and demonic. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of demonic wisdom out there today. Absolutely there is from all different kinds of facets of life. And I love how he says if you harbor um, bitter and envy selfish, um, don't so, boast about it. So it just it, it causes us to look inside of our hearts and not to have bitterness. We've all been hurt. We've all had somebody disappoint us, say something about us. How many times you know, yeah, do we wake all, up? We, and, yeah, we've all been hurt bitter, but I think a lot of people will never be wise right. because they're so full of um, bitterness. And yeah. they're so full of, what does it say here? Um, anger, uh, selfish, selfish ambition. ambition. There you find disorder in every evil practice. So right. if you have disorder in your life, this is really important. You have disorder, evil practice in your life. Mm-hmm. It's because you're harboring something right. like and like. Um, bitterness and anger and it's coming out yeah and so james would say you can't even begin to have wisdom until you deal with some of that crap right is it okay to say crap on your show sure okay fine (laughs) no but it is important to get to the bottom of it because when you see anger or you see somebody spouting off we want to deal with that when in reality if you get to the root system it's because you've been hurt and you didn't deal with it properly yeah. and wisdom doesn't stream from that it doesn't flow from that stream yeah that's good your stream has to be pure it has to come from the heart you have to get your head and heart in alignment with the word of god and when that works out it comes out beautifully as wisdom yeah so before we talk about five things to get wisdom in your life um I, what I love when when the Bible talks about these these eight qualities of wisdom you see here in James, mm-hmm. but every person. So here's what I want to tell you: every person has a culture or a, a demeanor. Mm-hmm. So you right now you're listening. Mm-hmm. You have a demeanor about you. Mm-hmm. When you walk into the room, you bring a spirit. Right. So if you're a single adult, married, teenager, you walk into the room, you bring something. Yep. Most people, let's just be honest, bring what disorder, chaos, gossip. Chaos, bitterness, bitterness, unforgiveness. They're negative, complaining, complaining. <laughs> so I just want to think about it. When you walk into a room, here's the assignment. Yeah. What do you bring? That's very good. That's a really good thing for us to put. Yeah. What into do you practice. bring? And you know, and let's be honest. Like I think Janet brings peace every time. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, you know, there's times where I'm angsty or whatever, mm-hmm. and you, you just you bring something to the well, table. I think it's our humanity. Yeah. To think that we're never going to have, be angsty or upset or yeah. anger. Yeah. Those are not... Those are not. You're not being human at that moment. Yeah, I, that's part of being a human is learning how to work through those things. It's when you don't allow yourself to work through those and you harbor it inside, then things grow inside. In, in every function you go to, that would be a really great question yeah, for the next you, seven days. Yeah, what do you bring to the room? What am I bringing to the room? To my work office. What am to, I bringing to my family? Yeah, to that. What yeah. am I bringing to my marriage? Everything. What am I bringing to my kids? Yeah, what do you bring? And James would say, here's his list. His mm-hmm. kind of top eight list would be yeah. peace-loving, be considerate, yeah, be submissive, <laughs> pure. That's way different than complaining and negative and right. um, full of good fruit, impartial and sincere. Sincere. Mm. I mean, honestly, maybe you're talking about new content when we, when, when we come back next season yeah but that i mean those eight things would make like how to be a person that brings purity Mm -hmm. of thought peace loving consider that's the life of wisdom or it's the fruit of wisdom i think that'd be another way to put it that if you're living wise and you're not just living foolish and just a bunch of information know-it-all and this is again about you getting along with people you just take these eight qualities also in your life will be changed so yeah let's look at it what are mm-hmm. the ways to get wisdom we have five things why don't we start that off jenna how to get wisdom i think the first one is to fear god and that can be misinterpreted when we say fear god because we all have our own definition of fear yeah, <laughs> like that doesn't mean we're afraid of god it just means we have a holy reverence for who god is yeah 
it's what what does Proverbs say? It says the fear mm-hmm. of the Lord again, reverence or right. oddness of God, right. is the beginning of wisdom. It's interesting that the very beginning of wisdom is this right relationship with God, yeah. this reverence and awe of who He is. And again, I think you're right. The word fear can be misinterpreted here. Yep. We do fear the Lord, but we don't fear Him out like like we fear whatever it would be over here. Fear man. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah fear of failure. But that's a reverence, a reverence to God. And so the first step, I think all of us to really totally, I want to be a person of, of wisdom, mm-hmm. uh, is to fear God. It says here in Proverbs, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So it's huh. saying here, it's a pretty harsh statement. It is. You are being a fool. I know I know we're not supposed to call people fools, but the Bible does. How here. about foolish? Well, it says fools. <laughs> so you say foolish, but it says fools. It does say it. <laughs> Despise. So if you despise wisdom, mm-hmm. you decide um, purity, peace, loving, all those things we just talked about. Right. Instruction. You 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 despise people telling you anything. Right. And I think we are living in a day where people don't want to be told what to do. If it you know the whole if it feels good, do it. Do your own thing. There's no absolutes, and that's why the world's in utter chaos right yeah. now because there's not a full set of no. There is a discipline that we fall under alignment of the Word of God, and He is the one that gives us our roadmap. And when we don't allow that and we don't allow others to help us uh, move along in the directions we should go, we're, we're being foolish. Yeah. No, I, it's the first step. So if you're listening, it's the first step. You have to kind of come back to, like, do you fear God? Yeah. And, or are you just, um, what's, what's the opposite of that? I just want to become like a culture. Yeah. Wanting to become like the world, yeah. wanting wanting to take on the attitude of, of the world around you. And I think that mo- well, you have to be careful as we watch what's happening on social media. Everything from you know sexual identity people are dealing with today to mm-hmm. social media. It, you have to ask who's making the rules of your life, who's narrating. Right. It's like the monopoly question. Who's, who right. calls the house rules? And you yeah. have to say, no, I'm going to fear God. And, and yeah. that's the beginning of living out a true life of wisdom. That's good. So the second one is humble yourself. And the truth is, that is a big loaded word, but it's so small. But humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself under the Lord, under his mighty hand, and he will be the do, one to Do you remember the song we used to sing? As humble kid? yourself no. in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself <laughs> oh, in the sight of the Lord. And he, Penny. and he. <laughs> All right, we'll keep no. going. <laughs> Can I sing or not? No, you can't sing. By the way, one funny thing is, um, <laughs> Jana's whole dream was to marry someone she that would lead in worship with her. Yep, I sure did. And, and the first me. time I heard him sing, I'm like, oh, Jesus, help us. <laughs> it was it was in my church in Piner's Yeah, Idaho. we were just like young. And there was nobody really in the room, and you were so loud. And, <laughs> Sing at the top of his lung. I'm like, oh Lord, help us. So anyway, the, no, 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 no. So one more, one more truth. Okay. So she sent me to um, voice lessons. Voice lessons early on in our marriage. I did. So talk about that. I did. I, did. I went to the voice. The funny thing is, I sat in a side room while you were in there singing, and I felt so sorry for that voice teacher. <laughs> And she was so nice she to you. She was going, what did she do? Did I hit the snow? She'd go, sing up here. And you would go, uh. <laughs> No, go a little higher. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and we just kind of learned that that's not your, that's not where your light shines. That's not but wh- you're a worshiper. You oh, just, oh, yo, just there's a total sing. difference between worshiping and singing. <laughs> okay, humble yourself. Here's the thing that I always find is interesting. Notice the language of the Bible here. Humble yourself. In other words, at the end of the day, it's not, the responsibility of someone else to humble you. Mm-hmm. So it's a responsibility of yourself. So like Jen and I, on a marriage, uh, just in context of marriage, my job, her job is not to humble me or my job to humble you. Right. It's interesting. It says humble yourself. Right. And I would even say it's not God's job. I know this is a little bit theology here mm-hmm. that God calls us to humble ourselves. Now, God will humble you. Oh, he will. He will. <laughs> but the right phrase there is hum- I've always thought that was interesting how James I think it's 410 and other places in the Bible says humble yourself mm-hmm. and as you do the proper job right it's not someone else's job now at times someone will humble you and it's not always yeah. wrong but it's not the job of the person ultimately right. we have to make a choice I'm gonna uh, I'm not know-it-all right I'm not I I am gonna walk in humility mm-hmm. and I think it's only in that position that 
you can have wisdom to really go forward. Right. I think it's counterintuitive in our culture today. That's not what the culture is teaching. No, not anything. It's, it's do your best, be the best, show your best self on social media, you know, and puff yourself up to where you're just this, even I have to giggle, because sometimes preachers are the worst. Pastors and staff, church people are the absolute worst. So we're worst. talking about all preachers but me. Well, yeah, you don't do this. <laughs> but they, they want to get the right angle or the right lighting and fill the room. They want to show the room of everybody worshiping the right chorus. They snap the picture and it's like, ah, that's not all bad no, to I be mean, excited about that. But we have to watch ourselves and keep ourselves in check and, and humble ourselves in all situations, it's not about who has the better house, who has the better boat, who has the better, you know, whatever. What it, how it doesn't matter. What matters is that we honor God in everything that we do. Yeah, and it all belongs to Him anyway. So you will never. This is really big. You will never walk in wisdom if you just are not willing to have a, a posture of humility, right? And a posture of learning. And and it and we all deal with pride. Mm-hmm. Every one of us, I think, mm-hmm. it, for people to say they don't by itself is, is arrogance. Right. <laughs> and so you got to position yourself. And if you think you know it all, you have all the information, or you're the smartest person in the room, yeah. the truth is you will never truly have the wisdom that will impact every area of your life, will impact all your relationship, everything, if you don't walk yourself, really right. learn the art of, of humbling yourself. I love that. And then the third thing is don't harbor bitterness. And that is is a loaded statement because bitterness gets in the way of wisdom every day (laughs) it it just does it blocks it when you're when if you've ever met a bitter person or if you've ever or if you are a bitter person yeah if you're walking through that i want to just stop and encourage you today Um, do whatever you can to clean that out and make it work if that means you have to go back 10 years from now and apologize to somebody where you have done something to hurt them and you've harbored bitterness because they did that to you, um, I would encourage you to make that right because the Lord will bring you to places where he will bring those situations up to you for you to actually take action. That's what God does. That's what wisdom does. And I experienced that somewhat this week. Yeah, I was was wondering if you were going to go there. I did. I had an experience this week where I'm like, oh, boy, I've got some work to do. I didn't know it was there. Yeah, it just popped Um, this out over Easter weekend, by the way. Easter weekend kind of surfaced it. And I'm like, oh, I've got some things there that I got to deal with. And so none of us are exempt from that. We all have stuff that we carry, but it's, it's the ones who will be brave enough to get up in the morning, look at themselves in the mirror. And when God brings those things into your life to the surface, he doesn't do it to bring pain. He does it so that we can deal with it and posture ourselves in a place so that we're not holding and harboring onto any pain yeah. that could affect us in the future. Because you pass that on to your children. Yeah. If you're a mom of littles today or a dad of littles and you're harboring bitterness, you are modeling for the next generation and you're passing that right on to them. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm living this today. No, this one's today, a, boy. This is a I, big one. No, for we me. didn't see that coming in our notes there. Yeah. But yeah, Jana was feeling, uh, what's the right word? I was feeling off, off. all off week last week. Yeah. I was feeling off and I couldn't figure out. You know, it's Easter week. I should be feeling great. I should be excited. And I just couldn't figure out why I was feeling what I was feeling. And boy, when it popped up, it was like, okay, that's why. Because I have unresolved things hurt that I need to go back and deal with. And I just think people don't acknowledge that. They're not honest with themselves. So they live their life in um, ungodliness and not wisdom. And as James talked, because you're harboring something that Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with today. Right. So it has nothing to do with right now. And unfortunately, because it's dealing with today, everyone around you is affected by it. And you're infecting everybody because of today, which they have no clue what's really going on. Yeah. And I just think we need to do better yeah. at, at re-engaging our soul work. Yeah. It's soul work. It's yeah. something that and we by, have to by work the, if on. If you're married there, I, I think that you need to encourage each other. Not not. We don't like the term hold each other accountable, but a little bit encourage that. Encourage, hey, you need to do some soul work. And mm-hmm. without being, it's, it, it, it's as lovers, married mm-hmm. people that are encouraging each other to really be honest with the soul and mm-hmm. give people grace enough to actually walk through it. Yep. So, Get rid of bit, you know, bitterness is old old phrases like be better or be bitter. Well, yeah. it's a cliche, but it's true. Yep. 
Bitterness, it will, it's poison that will kill you every day. So if you're listening to this and you have any hint of bitterness, it will poison you. And I would say never truly be a person of wisdom. Yeah. Because you can't be wise and bitter right. at the same time. They're, 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 they're contrary to each and other. And for anybody to say they've never dealt with this, you're just not being honest. Yeah, that's good. I'm sorry. There is not a single person on the planet that hasn't been hurt and disappointed. walked disappointed. Someone did things to us that, that were wrong yeah. and we deserve to be right. And the, the truth is, if you're, if you're not being honest with yourself, you're you're not going to be honest with anybody else. Yeah. So and, and just a little side note here: what some of the um, um, worst bitterness? If, I guess all bitterness is bad, mm -hmm. but some of the most complicated. There's the right word: um, bitterness is when it's associated with church life, mm -hmm. like a like a like your pastor hurt you, mm -hmm. or um, your church hurt you. I hear that mm -hmm. all the time, and it's like, wow, it's different than if your job hurt you. Yeah. It's well, so I think even even deeper than that. I think when it's a family member that has deeply wounded you yeah. or, 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 or a fellow person that you love or whatever it would be, mm -hmm. it, it's also deep. And mm -hmm. we have to be better. I mean, um, what, what's the Lord's prayer? Lord, it says, uh, forgive me of my sins mm -hmm. as I forgive those who sin against me. Think about that. Forgive me of my transgressions as I forgive those who have sinned against me. Yeah. It is it, the essence of gospel living yeah. of being a person that will let go of bitterness when it comes your way. So, yeah. so let it go. So maybe we should do it. Let it go. Oh, <laughs> that's not even a... <laughs> it's okay. It's, it applies. All right. Let's go Hold to on, the next one. Hold on. This is my one. question. Maybe <laughs> later on we'll do a show on how you let this bitterness go well, and report on Well, when I'm there, I'll let yeah, you know. when you report on it. <laughs> okay. Number four. I think this is big is learn, and this is just a skill, to ask a lot of questions. It's good. The wisest people are not always having the answers. If you always think you have the answers, you're not a wise person. It's learn good. to just ask a lot of questions all yeah. the time. Or another way I like to put that is be curious. Right. When you be curious about what's going on, why, if, you know, yeah. when, instead of just so many people walk in and they're just, again, it goes back to arrogance a little bit, but it's a skill. Yeah. So don't, don't lead or don't live with answers, live with questions, be more curious. Right. I think putting putting ourselves in any situation where we're a learner and we're a studier of people and a studier of environments yeah. really help us. That's a practical tool, right? That's a practical way to mm -hmm. do that. If you struggle with being a know-it-all and always having to be right, and, and no one could ever question you because you have all the answers, um, I would encourage you to reposture yourself yeah. And be, be curious about asking somebody else about their life. Draw things out of their life. Well, tell, me, tell me how that worked for you. And begin to ask questions of curious about other people, but also environments. If you're walking into a new environment, you need to study how that environment works, what got them there. And I think if we, if we all worked like that, um, none of us would be experts at anything. <laughs> no, no. I, to me, anytime it's just practical. So I, not anytime, I try. When I walk into a place of conflict or tension, mm -hmm. I try to position myself to take a deep breath and ask questions. Yeah, you do that very well. So, yeah, and I think it's critical. Just ask, hey, what's going on here? Give me content yeah. before you open up your mouth and give answers to problems that don't even exist. Right. You know, Jan, you're a certified coach, which probably most people don't know, but that's a, a fundamental one-on-one -on -one of coaching they taught you, right? Right. Is ask questions. Right. The power of a question. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the other thing when I think about questions, I think, and I don't have the stat in front of me, but Jesus asks questions all the yeah, time. Look at the parables. Oh, question after question after yeah. question. Um, who do the people say I am? I think the yeah. power of a question will at least position your heart Yep. to walk in wisdom. So ask questions, don't yep. give answers. That's good. And then finally, and I think this may be the most important one, is mm -hmm. uh, walk with the wise. Yes, Proverbs thirteen twenty says, walk with the wise and become wise, for a p companion of fools suffers <laughs> harm. <laughs> <laughs> We've no, got some pretty uh, broad scriptures in, broad, in your face. Bold, bold. <laughs> I mean, let's take the lot. Let's for a companion of fools. In other words, if you hang around, let me see if you as clear as we can. Yeah. If all you hang around is people that we're going to say foolish to be nice, but the Bible mm -hmm. says fools. Mm -hmm. Hang around people that you that are foolish, you will become foolish. Right. It, you're show me. It's that old saying: Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Right. Show me your friends. So show me your friends or who you associate with, 
and I will show you what kind of person you will ultimately become no matter what you do. Right. And as parents, we want to we want to pound that into our young people, right? We want to say hang around good, you know, those friends aren't good for you or you know, stay away from those people, but I think it's true in adults as well. You know, you hang around, you'll know people who hang around uh, different people because if you're a, a person who is a negative you person, around, yeah. you're going to find All every person people. who's negative and you're going to cluster together and then it's just this toxic pull of negativity. Everything that comes out, nothing's positive that comes out of that. Or if you're a sarcastic person, yeah, all you- oh yeah, where's, the sar- where's my people? Where's my people group? And I think that if we want to grow in Christ and we want to become wise in how we apply that, we need to find people, not just because they're old, Again, it goes back to what we said before. Yeah. Just because you're old doesn't mean doesn't make you a wise person. Because yeah. you know, I think of King David. He was young yeah, oh, when he yeah. started to be king. He wasn't an old person, no. but he had wisdom. Yeah, with his heart was right. He feared he, God. Yep. He uh, yeah. David was a ex- beautiful a example. man after God's own heart. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Um, so it's not age. It's really yeah. just position of your heart. Yeah. Um, you know, a walk with the wise and become wise. Walk with the wise and become wise. In other words. If you're lacking wisdom, whatever area of your life, find somebody that's wiser than you, walk right. with them, ask questions, right. lean into them. And and that that's probably the, the number one secret to becoming a wise person. Yep. I still do that. Yep. I still look around the room. Who's got a marriage that I admire or a, or a personality trait that I really admire and aspire to be? I'll go. And it doesn't have to. It can be a teenager and in a person that I look at and go, wow, I just really love how they do that. And I'm studying every person that I meet. I'm I'm a studier of people. Yeah. I like to learn. I like to look around the room and go, okay, let's steer clear of that one. We're not going in that pocket. And we have a responsibility before God to do that. Yeah. God's not going to do that for you. He's given you all the abilities that you can do. He's, he's given those to you to put into place for better relationships. Yeah. I have a little quote here that I want to say. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in trouble. <laughs> I, yeah, I just think if you're the smartest person you know, you're in trouble. If yeah. you're the smartest, if all, just it in means trouble. you're not learning. Yeah, it just means it's just you're not learning. And um, we're telling you as it relates to relationships, our relationships will be stronger, healthier yep. if we learn to walk in wisdom and not just yeah. godly wisdom and not just a bunch of Google information. Yeah. You, these, these are just critical to having the gospel impact your life. Yeah, not Google theology. Google theology, <laughs> godly wisdom. <laughs> Google godly and... What do you, so to be honest about our <laughs> countdown clock, I have no idea. It keeps I on think going. We're, I it think keeps we're on there. going. Let me, let me find out. No, let me, no, let, we're let, there. Oh, no, I got find <laughs> It says 32. See, we're done. Are we done? Yeah, we're Are done. Are you going to sing a song? <clears throat> Goodbye. <laughs> it's not even a song. Yeah, it is. Okay, since I open, I'm going to close it. Next okay. week, we'll see you. Oh, hi. Oh, oh. We'll see you. Look, at, look at there. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> see you next week as we end season one, spring season. Next 20. week, we'll end season one. And then we're going to come <laughs> back and um, we're having fun and yes. loving life. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> 